morning everybody doing some more work on my truck camper this morning it's a project I started last night doing a little bit of rewiring and in the process of doing that it was easiest to get to the wiring by removing the inverter so while I have the inverter out I thought I'd show you a little bit about my electrical system back here in the plumbing access compartment which is located below the sink in the bathroom on my Arctic Fox 811. Get my little work light in here. So this wood platform is the top of the battery box. The battery box, can't really see it very well, but it's right there. So first off, we've got a shunt. Basically what a shunt is, is it's a precision resistor. The purpose of a shunt is to measure current flow. So at a given amount of current flow, there's a specific voltage drop across those four little plates. And I've got a Link 10 battery monitor, and what that device does is it measures that voltage drop across that shunt and converts that to a DC amperage reading. And the Link 10 is an amp hour monitor that displays voltage, amps, and amp hours consumed from the battery bank. Also, to get the inverter to fit in here, I had to rearrange the plumbing a little bit. That's the sink P-trap. Right now I pulled the P-trap out in order to get the inverter out. And what else we got back here is, this is the remote monitor, the remote panel for the inverter, that's the cable. We've got my solar fuse and battery temperature sensor wire for the solar controller. And you can see that DC circuit breaker back there, right up against the wall. Lots of wires connected up to that. And this is my <clears throat> positive power for the Link 10 battery monitor. This is the main DC feed from the batteries. And this is going to the camper electrical system. I don't recall what that is. But let's see if I can trace that. And that goes into as well. And this other large cable right here, that's a wire that I added and what it does is it goes in through this hole, down through the area behind the stove, and then out through an access port to get outside of the camper into the area where the truck bed is. And that then goes to an Anderson style connector there's also a negative cable, which is right, right over here. It's, it's this cable. Adjust my light here. That cable right there. So those two cables go to the Anderson connector, and then under the side wing and overhang of the camper, down in the truck bed, I have another Anderson connector which goes to the truck electrical system. So that gives me higher amperage charging than the factory wiring from the truck. And that is a four gauge wire. So I've been busy in here rerouting and tidying up some of the wiring. Let's start with the shunt green and black wire connect to the load side of the shunt orange wire connects to the battery side of the shunt the green and the orange are the sense wires that measure the voltage drop across the shunt these are a twisted pair my orange wire was about two inches longer than it needed to be so I shortened that I moved my negative cable, I t just twisted it around so it exits 
to the right side of the shunt. It was coming off over this way to the left. I bolted down the shunt and the fuse for the solar panel. I got rid of these butt splice crimps and put a normal barrel style inline butt splice crimps. I, did, uh, I redid this wire for the power for the, the Link 10 battery monitor. Put a new fuse, it's a mini fuse. I just need to install the fuse once I get everything else done. Remote panel wiring, I moved that. That's not going to be where it rests, but I just tucked it back there to get it out of the way while I reinstall the inverter. Some of the other wiring, this is my big cabling for the, the shunt. I routed that behind the drain tank vent and then back behind here so that it'll keep that out of the way. And that pretty much describes all of the rerouting of the wiring I did. That wasn't the purpose of taking the inverter out. The reason I took the inverter out was to rewire its AC input and bypass some other equipment that I had. I had an inline hardwired surge suppressor mounted inside of the camper below the oven and it worked well but so much of the time I use generator power in the summer to run my air conditioning and the problem is that the generator doesn't react fast enough to the load of the air conditioner so the voltage drops and when that voltage drops the surge suppressor which is also an energy management system would see that low voltage the voltage wouldn't recover quick enough so that energy management system would cut off my incoming power then the air conditioner would go into a locked rotor condition and it was just a nightmare to try to get the air conditioning to run on the generator due to that energy management system so my plan is to get rid of that and then use a different surge suppressor one that hooks up to the shore power pedestal that way I'll just use it only when I need to use it which would be when I'm connected to shore power at an RV park or whatnot so the generator power won't go through the surge protector it'll go straight into the RV I've gotten all my wiring tidied up and the inverter reinstalled. All I have left to do is install the P-trap for the sink drain. But my negative and positive cables connect to the back of the inverter. This wire right here is the AC output that goes into the camper. And this wire right here is the AC input that comes from the shore power inlet. The remote panel wiring and the temperature sensor wiring, I tucked all of that extra wiring down, down below. Temperature sensor for the solar is right there. Fuse for the Link 10 battery monitor is right here. I zip tied it to the sink drain and uh, that's really about it. Just need to install the P-trap and we're done with this project.